So in this class, we are going to check how to work with our algebraic equations. You're going to notice that working with algebraic equations is very, very similar to the algebraic expression. The only difference that you're having now is that you are supposed to solve uh, for the unknown value that you are given. There is always an unknown value to be found. Is it X? Is it Y? The is an unknown value that you're supposed to work with. So the question is, how do you solve that unknown value like what you're given on question number four? Given 4.1, solve the following equations. And we are given the first part of our equation. That is three into X plus one is equal to eight X minus two. So asking yourself in this case, how am I supposed to solve this type of an equation? What am I given? All right. I have got a bracket on the left-hand side. There is a bracket there. And in order for us to expand this bracket, to remove this bracket, we are supposed to multiply by the term or the number that is out of the bracket that is the three. So three must be distributed throughout. So that is three times X, which is going to give us three X, three times one, which is going to give us a positive three. So you multiply everything by three. 3 times x, which is 3x, 3 times 1, that's a positive 3. So this is equal to 8x minus 2 on the right-hand side. Collecting our terms, depending with how you want to work with the equation, you can choose to remain with 3x here. You can choose to take it the other way. It's up to you. So if I choose to collect 8x this side and take the 3 this side, it means 8x as it crosses the equal sign, to this side where 3x is, it is going to carry a negative. It was a positive. So the moment it crosses the equal sign, that carries a negative. It was a positive. On the right-hand side, there is a minus 2. But the moment this positive 3 crosses the equal sign, it changes the sign, so it will be a negative 3. So it was a positive. On this side, it is going to be a negative. It was a positive eight on this side, it's gonna be a negative eight. That is the concept. So using your calculator there, you can subtract right? three minus eight. These are like terms. Three minus eight, that is minus five. So it's gonna be minus five X minus two minus three on your calculator, that's minus five. So to find X, how am I going to find X? It's a product there. So to remove this minus five so that I remain with X, I'm going to divide the product. So the opposite of a multiplication, we divide. So if we divide by negative five both sides, that means we are obtaining or we are remaining with the value of X. So X will be equal to what? Minus five divided by minus five is going to give us a positive one. So never be tempted here to cross or to take this negative to that. This one is a product. Minus 5x is equal to minus 5 is different from minus 5 plus x is equal to minus 5, where you take these to the other side of the equation. This one is a product. They are different. It's not the same as this one. It's not the same. So for a product, you remove this by dividing by that number that is multiplying. All right, so that was our first equation, uh, two marks for that. Then 4.12, again, solve the equation that they were given a uh, fraction. Let's see what you're given there. That is x plus seven, everything over four plus uh, 3x minus one over three, which is equal to zero. So we actually can think of, we can think of the cross multiplication. And this was going to be a very, very tempting situation. Cross multiplication is done when you have got a fraction on the left-hand side and another fraction on the right-hand side. There I can cross multiply. Here I have got two fractions, yes, but they are on one side of the equation. So don't be tempted unless you are to transpose these to the other side. So in this case, how do I solve? That's the question. I can simply consider to say I've got three fractions. Zero is the same as zero over one. So it becomes a fraction if I divide by one. Remember, zero is a rational number. It's a rational number. So it means I just need to find the LCD, which is the LCM of these denominators, which is four, three, and a one. Why 
because with this LCD, I'm going to use it to multiply each and every term. And this clears off every fraction that we have there. So to clear fractions, you multiply each and every term by the LCD, which is the LCD of these denominators 4, 3, and 1, that's a 12. 4 times 3, that's a 12. So you have a 12 there. We have a 12 there. So that's it. So this is 12 divided by 3 or 4 into 12. That will be 3 times. So this 3 take note, it multiplies everything in the numerator. There is an expression that we are given in the numerator there. So be careful there. The 3 is going to multiply everything. So it's going to be 3 into x plus 7. 3 into this 12, that's going to be a 4. So the 4 also, so that's a plus uh, 4. In this case, there's a plus. You take this 4, so it's going to be plus 4. Multiplying everything, just like the previous case, multiplying the whole of this part, which is the 3x minus 2. So this is going to multiply uh, 3x minus 1. I mean, this 3x minus 1. So the plus four is multiplying the bracket. So now you open, you open a bracket there so that it multiplies everything. Then no matter what we get here, but as long as it is multiplied by a zero, it's going to give us a zero. So I have brackets. So if you check what we now have at this stage, it is exactly the same way like what we had in the previous question where we were given brackets. And we have to consider that whenever there are brackets, I have to expand these brackets, uh, multiplying uh, the number that is outside of the bracket here. The number outside of the bracket is the one that affects the bracket. So three is going to affect this, four is going to affect the other bracket. So three multiplies everything in this bracket, three times X, that is going to be three X. All right, three times a positive seven, three times a positive seven, that's a positive 21. Four, positive four and a positive three. So four multiplies three, that is gonna be 12X. So it's a positive there. Four and negative one, that is going to be a negative four and that is equal to zero. So it's true that you have uh, removed, cleared your fractions. The brackets are no longer there. We are just left with a normal equation where I have to collect the like terms, the part with the X and also the part with y, I am in the part of the constants. So I've got x here, I've got also x. So these are the like terms that I'm considering. So if I add this, this is going to be three plus a 12, that's a plus there, three plus a 12. So this will be 15x. On the numbers, I'm left with the 21 and a minus four. So this is 21 minus four. So if you subtract 21 minus four, uh, that was going to give us a positive uh, 17. That's a positive 17. So your calculator there uh, is there, guys, for as a guidance. If you're stuck on multiplying, adding these numbers, you can just use your calculator 3 plus 12, which is a 15. Then this is 21. So that's 21 minus a 4. So that's a 17 on this side. All right. So since I want to solve for x, this time I have got the power to transpose the 17 because it is being added and we do not have x here. So we can take it to the other side of the equation. And the moment it crosses the equal sign, it is becoming a negative. So we're supposed to subtract 17 here. We subtract 17 here. We subtract 17. That is the case. Just cross that. Take the number out to the other side of the equation. That will be 0 minus 7, which is what? Which is a minus 17. What we need is x, not 15x. So if 15x is equal to minus 17, what about x? You divide by 15 because the multiplication there. So x is going to be negative 17 over 15. So that is what you're going to have. You can have it as a decimal or you can just leave it like that. So that's it. That's, that's how you solve for x. You have to be very, very careful uh, uh, in your simplification. So this is it here, 4.2. Solve for x and y. The moment you're solving for two variables at the same time, it means we are solving simultaneously these equations. You're solving for x and y at the same time. So we were given two 
equations to be considered in this case. Uh, the first one, that's our equation one, and this is our equation two. And you are asked to solve for x and y. You are not given the method to use. So uh, uh, you guys, it's best, uh, I, I've seen that. You, mo you, most of you, you understand working with the substitution method. But let me be clear about that. When dealing with the substitution method, also be careful that you do make proper substitutions. You make proper substitutions. What am I trying to say? Let's say I'm working from equation one. So in this case, these are those are um, uh, simultaneous equation. So I'm going to use a uh, substitution method using a uh, substitution method. So this is the method that I'm going to pick. So using the substitution method, this is it. I'm going to choose from these two equations, which one am I going to make the subject? Is it from equation one? Is it from equation two? So I want us to take equation one from equation one. So from equation one, we are given that x plus three y is equal to six. So you can choose to make x the subject, make X is the easiest part. Even on equation two, you choose what you want. So the first part that you choose is your choice. You have chosen to work from equation one. And from equation, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to make X the subject. Make X the, the subject. This is what I'm choosing. So it's your choice on that part. Just try to make what is easy. It's gonna be difficult, yes? We can make y the sub, but just consider there's a three that we have to divide with. But on x, there's nothing. It's just transposing this three y to the other side of the equation. It was a positive. So there, it is going to carry a negative. So it's going to be six minus three y. It was a positive. So it will carry a negative that side. So this is a, another equation that we have formulated from equation one. So we can now say this is our equation three. We took this from equation one. So what you do is that you are going to substitute, take note on the substitution. You substitute your equation three into two, not, not, not one, no. You made this the subject from one. So you substitute into the other equation, into the other one. So you're gonna substitute into equation two. If, if you make x from equation two the subject, therefore you substitute in equation one. That's why I said you, say, you have to be careful there. You made x the subject from equation one. So you don't substitute back to equation one. It's like you're neutralizing the question. You, go, you won't find anything if you do that. So you substitute into the other equation. That's the idea. So meaning to say from equa uh, in equation two, it's going to be minus x. What is representing X is now replaced. This X is going to be substituted. The minus is not X, no. The X is the one that you are substituting. What is the value of X there? What is the expression for X? X is represented by six minus three Y. So everything will be affected by negative. So we have substituted X, which is the equivalent of X, but there is a plus eight Y also. So plus eight Y, this is going to be equal to five. That's why now we have an equation and this equation, there's only y. We no longer have x. So there we can just solve direct for y. So we can solve, expand our brackets. We are back to this issue of the brackets like what we had here. We have to solve this. So you can just expand our brackets uh, by negative six, the first bracket distribute, I mean by negative one. This is negative one times six, which is negative six negative and negative, that will be a positive 3y plus 8y, which is there, is supposed to give us a 5. So if I collect the like terms on the left-hand side, it means I'm going to remain with 3 plus 8, 3 plus 8, that is 11. Uh, that's 11y is equal to 5. So to solve for y in this case, I can choose to take this positive, uh, this negative 6y here, transpose this to the other side of the equation. It was a negative so written on the other side of the equation, it is going to be a positive six. It was a negative. So this side, it will be a positive. So if you add, that's 11. Five plus six, that's 11. 
take note, this is a product. So you don't transpose it here. You divide a product. You divide a multiplication. You divide to remove this number that is multiplying. So therefore, y is equal to what? 1. So using the substitution method, it is best for you to substitute where you have made x the subject. Yes, you can substitute in any of these equations to find x, but it is best for you to substitute where you've already made the subject, uh, which is equation three. Remember from equation three, you have already this equation that x is equal to what? Six minus three y. X is already the subject from equation three. So we can just substitute the value of y that we have, deter uh, that we have calculated here. So this is six minus three uh, times one. So that's six minus three, uh, three times one, that's three. So it's going to be a three. So at the end, the X value was going to be three when Y is equal to one. So what it means is that for these values of X and Y that I've determined, if I substitute the value of X that I'm given to be, um, to be a three here, if I substitute this as a three plus, this is three times Y. Remember, Y is one. So this is three times one. I'm supposed to get a positive six. So if I simplify this, that's exactly a six. The same thing, if you substitute here, you must get a positive five. That is to prove, to see that these values that you calculated here, the value of X and the value of Y are, are, are true. So that is how you solve these equations uh, given a uh, substitution method. What you need is to make sure that you make x or y the subject from one equation you substitute on the other equation just like what we did here we made x the uh, the subject from equation one but when you have to substitute you substitute uh, in equation two by substituting you will see that you'll be left with only one variable whether it's x or that's y solve for that one then substitute back to solve uh, for another one. That's how you simply work out this uh, typical simultaneous equation using what? Uh, substitution method. So we shall have different methods as we move on, elimination method, this and that. So there are different methods that you're going to have under Maison African Motives. So make sure that you're part of the family by subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that will be taken from Maison African Motives till we meet again.